<sighs> Hi y'all, Kraken Latte here. Here's the new 1 to 50 leveling guide as promised. This is a close look at how I'll be leveling my alts, so I'll be walking you through each part from prep to finish. As a quick disclaimer, this is not for players who are totally new to the game. This guide relies on items and zones that new players will not have access to. You're considered a veteran by Blizzard if you've leveled at least one character to max, and that means you can then use the route in this guide. For those of you who have seen my old guides or have been playing since at least Battle for Azeroth, you'll know that the leveling system has changed. The entire 1 to 50 experience now scales dynamically as one whole unit rather than being separated into static chunks by expansion. This means that if you level through a zone and go from 20 to 28, and then do that same zone on another character in the 30s, you will not get the same 8 levels. So, the zones in this guide are best used in the order presented. If done out of order or in a different level range, you'll notice the results will change drastically, and you could actually come up a few levels short at the end. Weird, right? But before we get into the specific route, let's look at the preparation you need to do first. First, add-ons. I don't use anything super fancy, but there are at least three I recommend you get. One, auto turn in. This add-on lets you auto accept and auto turn in quests to help speed things up. It even has a nice looting option and includes dailies. Two, cinematic canceler. This does exactly what the name suggests. It cancels cinematics and cutscenes so you don't have to watch them. And a three, Silver Dragon. This is a rare detection add-on that will show little skulls on your maps for spawn points, as well as warning you when one is near. Now, heirlooms. I highly recommend you get yourself a full set if you don't already have it, and make sure it's fully leveled. Wearing these will give you access to the set bonuses they have, and they also will scale all the way to level 50 as you level so you don't have to worry much about replacing gear from quests. Alright, that's what you need to know to get started, so let's dive into the actual route. First, here's the whole route in list form along with the expected times and level results. Looks pretty simple, right? Well, it is. But I want you to keep in mind that these times come with experience and familiarity of the zones. Your times will vary based on your own experiences. That's partly why I have a range for you here, which has the highest and lowest times I've received in each area. First up, Exile's Reach. If you're starting as an allied race, a death knight, or a demon hunter, that means you can skip this step. I've made the time bar on this video into timestamps for all of you, so you can refer back to the parts you need later. For all of you who are starting as level 1 base races, Exile's Reach is your go-to. You can select this in the very, very beginning, right after you've created your new character. This zone is extremely straightforward, and all you need to do is follow the quest chain. So put on your heirlooms, get that heirloom bike on your bar if you have it, and make sure you do everything, including the two optional quests of the Light Elemental and the Elite Bear, because once you leave, you can't return. This all should only take you about 30 minutes. You will leave at level 10, but more specifically, you'll be part way into the next level, which is a nice little boost that you'll get over the allied race characters. Once you've completed Exile's Reach and you stand at the city gates, make sure you skip the tour. You don't need it, and it will lock you into doing the BFA intro afterwards, so don't do that. We'll need that XP later. Auto Turnin will try to accept the quest, so if you do, it's fine. Just delete it, set the add-ons option to dailies, and then decline the tour. Change the add-on back to all, and you're good to go. Now it's time to get yourself prepped. Here's your to-do list. Allied races, demon hunters, and death knights should pick up at this point as well, since you'll be in the same level range. First, pick up your first riding license. If you're an allied race death knight or demon hunter, you'll already have this. Then buy some bags, preferably at least four of the largest size. Then get one stack of goblin gliders, and a stack or so of Potion of Deep Home. And then make sure you set your hearth here in the Valley of Strength. You'll want that later. I also recommend you grab the comfortable Rider's Barding mount equipment, since this item will prevent you from getting dismounted by NPCs. And lastly, if you want to pick up herbalism and mining, now is the time to do so. 
With all that taken care of, now head over to Chromie and set your time to Legion. As a tip, any of these will set all non-current expansion zones to scale to level 50, regardless of where you choose to level. Unfortunately, the Horde doesn't seem to get that free temporary 2-hour Hearthstone anymore from this quest. Now, right over to the nearest call board and pick up Tanan Jungle. Make sure you do the Legion part from Chromie and then Tanan from the call board in that order, or one will override the other and you'll lose one of the quests without it telling you. Picking them up now means you don't have to think about it later, and not choosing Cataclysm means we don't have to fly to Silverpine. Now, you are ready to begin the journey. So, as I just mentioned, it's time to get this show on the road. We're going to Silverpine Forest. Go back up to where the Flight Master in Orgrimmar is, climb the tower, and then take the portal to Undercity, and then ride over to Silverpine Forest. Once you reach the first quest, pick it up and then turn off the Cinematic Canceller add-on and leave it off for all of Silverpine Forest. The quests in this zone won't complete if you skip the cutscenes attached to them. There is one that you can skip though, and I'll let you know what one that is when we get there. While waiting for this first RP session to play out, grab the flight point, the other quest, and then just chill. It takes a hot minute. Waiting for RP is fairly common in this zone, so I hope you brought snacks. This zone is very linear with no branching or clustered quests, so there's no deviated pathing for me to give you. My main tip here would be to smash any rares you come across, but don't worry about getting all of them or feel like you need to go out of your way to get them. They aren't crucial to completing the zone. The one cutscene you can skip in this zone is the one where you ride a horse with Sylvanas to the next area. That's the only one though, don't try to skip any others. By the time you hit level 20, you should be around the Forsaken Front area. Make sure you have the flight point to this spot, and then hearth back to Urgamar. Pick up your level 20 riding and also turn on war mode. I highly recommend you turn on war mode so that you get the extra 10% XP gain from everything. Also make sure to pick your war mode talents too, since those are useful and some can even give passive heals. Then go back to Silverpine via that Undercity portal. Since you changed the time back to the past, you'll now be put inside the city. Head to the Flight Master and then fly back down to where you were questing. Then, just continue through the rest of the zone like normal until you reach the very last quest, Cities and Dust. This is a 5-ish minute RP that you don't need to do, so you can just drop the quest and ride over to Hillsbred Foothills, our next zone. If you've never done that last quest though, I recommend you see it at least once. Godfrey, who you resurrected in this zone, shoots Sylvanas with a shotgun, so kind of an interesting scenario. All of Silverpine should have taken you between 80 and 100 minutes, and you should be at least level 23 or higher. The Lucky Horde gets Hillsbred, a zone that defies logic and gives an insane amount of XP in a very short amount of time, even without finishing the zone. Plus, like Silverpine, Hillsbred has rares around that you can smack for a little extra XP. This zone is fairly linear, but since we aren't going to complete it, I'll show you what to do. And to note, at any point during Hillsbred, you will hit level 30. Whenever you do, just drop what you're doing and hearth back to Urgrimmar. Any XP you gain beyond that won't be helpful since now you're in a new bracket, and front loading here will lower what you get in the next zone. So with that in mind, follow the quest chains that are thrown at you from the start, through the Azerload mine area, and then all the ones into the sludge fields. That part is straightforward. After that, it will want you to go to South Shore. We will, but we're actually going to come around the backside of it first. This will give you a chance to down a couple of rares along the way as well. In the water behind South Shore, you'll find Orcus. Pick up his quest, tell him to stand, wait for him, and then get his next quest. Then, follow the shore around to the south, which should be to the right of you, and kill a Naga. You'll get a quest to kill more of them. Kill those along the way to Orcus's quest. When you reach the mushrooms, make sure to kill a Knoll so you can get another quest that wants you to kill more Knolls. This one doesn't always drop immediately for some reason, so just kill them until you get it. Then complete it and the mushrooms. Head back to Orcus and finish off the Naga quest along the way if you need to. We are not going to turn in Orcus's quest, however. He'll take off with you, so don't. We're going to go up to South Shore first. 
do all of the South Shore quests, turn all of those in, and then go turn in Orcus's. He'll take you to a little island for the rest of his. At the end of that quest chain, you'll get flown up to Terran Mill, wait for some RP, and then you can turn in that quest. Rip Orcus. If you're still not level 30 by this point, go turn in the Aid the Frostwolf quest you picked up from Chromush. Then come turn in back to Chromush after talking to the Frostwolves. There's like three little quests jammed into that sequence that are just cutscenes, all of which are skipped thanks to the add-on so it takes like 30 seconds. You certainly should be level 30 now, but if you still aren't for some weird reason, talk to Krusk, the one other orc NPC here, and head down to East Point Tower. Quest there until you're level 30. You can do the other quests here at Terran Mill if you like, but I've found them to be way longer and more difficult than I prefer, and that'll really slow down your time. All of that should have only taken you between 45 and 65 minutes. So, when you're 30, head back to Urgamar, pick up your flying, track that Legion quest. We're going to the Broken Isles. When you talk to the NPC at the gates, the skip for the Legion intro won't immediately show up. It's been glitched for a while, but there's an easy fix. Just complete the quest that he gives you, turn it in, and then come back to him. Don't bother with the scenario, he'll have the skip after that quest. It's fine, I guess. You've got some free buffs now. Once in Dalaran, turn in the quest for the Hearthstone and then fly to Lorlathil and Valshara. No, not with the Flight Master. He won't have a flight point for you. I mean with your slow granny speed bum. Don't be sad though, even though it takes about 5 minutes to fly there, you actually get about 20% of a level just from the Exploration XP since you're covering a lot of zones. So that's cool. The quest you're aiming for is visible on the map, and you can set a pin there if that helps you. Once there, talk to Malfurion and begin the Valshara quests. This zone is only semi-linear and has small clusters between the main storyline that can be done in various orders. I like to have a certain order though, so here's the route I like to take. First, here's a look of the route as a whole. You can screenshot this if you like, but I'll walk you through it as well. Once you get the three Archdruid quests, we're going to fly up to the Archdruid of Lore and do those first. This is where you'll run into the first bonus objective as well. Legion's bonus objectives, unlike all the other expansions so far, intersect directly with the quests, and you'll be partly doing them anyways just by questing there. So you're going to want to do them all as you come across them. They're far easier than the other expansions in my opinion, and take very little time to do. With the Archdruid of Lore quests and the Harpy bonus objective done, now we'll fly down to the Archdruid of the Claw. Do all of those there. With those done, we're taking a detour before we head to the Archdruid of the Veil. In the Lunar Wing Shallows, there is a bonus objective with all those nasty little sprites, as well as a few quests. Do all of those. Then we're going to head down to the Lost Light Grotto. It's not marked very clear on the map, so I remember where it is by these little ridges here on the southern road. They look like a little dragon head to me. There's a moon well there and some quests. So do all those and make sure to pick up the one from the melting dryad down inside, as well as looting all the boomkin for an additional drop quest. When that area is done, now fly over to Grizzlewield. This area sits under the V in the Vale on the eastern side of the map. Pick up the quests from the Furbolg as well as the Grizzlecomb, and then do all of that. Now we'll go to the Archdruid of the Vale. It gets a lot more linear from here. Do all of those quests as well as the bonus objective, and just keep following the quest chains like normal. There's also a bonus objective at the Temple of Elun, so you want to do that when you get to that point. Fast forwarding to when you reach Andutala after the Harpy's area in Shadowfen, you'll be following Tyrande. This is still linear, but I have a couple tricks for you. The first time she asks you to follow her on Malfurion's trail, just keep going past poor Elothir here and right into a bonus objective. You can do the whole thing while she's catching up. Don't worry, it still counts even though you're good distance from her. Then come back and do the next chain of quests. You can do the same thing again after you turn in the back quest, then where she wants you to follow her again. You can start the bonus objective while waiting for her. Once she wants you to find Malfarian though, poke him and then keep clicking on things for the bonus objective along the way to each fake Malfarian. Make sure you finish the bonus objective before you turn in the quest at the end, because she's going to take off with you. 
after putting poor Ysera out of her misery, grab the quest from the dead human on the road nearby, and head down to Bradensbrook. Do everything here as well as the bonus objective that overlaps with the Black Rick Hold quests. By the end of it, you should be level 38 or at least really close to it, and that should have only taken you between 70 and 90 minutes. Now it's time to move on. We're done with Val Shirah, so we're going to fly to High Mountain. You'll see the Keepers of the Hammer quest on the map right next to the Sylvan Falls flight point. Flying there only takes a couple of minutes. Pick up that quest and then fly to Thunder Totem. Once you reach it, set your hearth here before heading down to talk to Mela. Now head down and talk to Mela to pick up the next quest. But we're actually not questing in High Mountain just yet. So take that portal behind Mela there back to Orgrimmar, the Horde to get a special portal thanks to the High Mountain Tyrant. It's a one-way port, but it's still handy. Once in Orgrimmar, go to the call board and pick up the quest from the guard standing by it. We're doing some stuff in Zandalar. Activate the intro, wait for Nathanos to walk in, and then talk to him again after turning in that quest. We want to skip the scenario because it's long and gives almost no XP. Now do the rest of the intro, pick any of the zones from the map, it doesn't matter which, and then pick up the first campaign quest from Nathanos. Now track that campaign quest you just got and head down to the docks. We're going to be unlocking the war campaign footholds. When you get to pick your first foothold, it doesn't matter which one. You're going to do all three of these unlocks and you can skip the resources quest. I do recommend turning off auto turn in or at least setting it to dailies mode before talking to Gallywix when you've chosen Drestvar. He tends to bug out for some reason, so better safe than sorry. You can return it to normal after that. The BFA intro and these footholds combined should only take you about 30-ish minutes and you should be well into level 40. After those are done, use a Diplom Potion to get back to Urgrimmar, or fly back up to the seal and take that portal if you don't have any on hand. Once back in Urgrimmar, go snag your level 40 flying. No more worrying about when you need to return to the trainer now! Then, track that Warlords of Draenor quest you picked up at the beginning of this journey, or get it again from the call board, and head down to the bottom floor of the portal room. Talk to the NPC mage there on the right, and they'll port you to the Blasted Lands. Once you're there though, delete that quest before flying through the Dark Portal. We don't actually need to do the intro scenario. Once you're through the Dark Portal, you'll appear near your soon-to-be garrison. Take that first quest, follow that chain. We need to get that garrison open and unlocked. Even after it's built, you're not 100% done. Talk to Gazlo and Rakan to get the next quests, and then continue until you pick up the one that wants you to go to Ashran. Don't worry about that though, you're actually done with your garrison now. You should be level 42, or really close to it, and the garrison should only have taken you between 10 and 15 minutes. Don't hearth out just yet though, we're going to Gorgrond. We don't get a free flight there, so we get to fly ourselves. But that's fine, since we have max flying anyways. The first quest is visible on the map, so that's where we're headed. This part's pretty straightforward. Just do these introduction quests up until you get to pick what type of outpost you want. I suggest the sparring one since those quests are easier, but it doesn't matter since we aren't doing them. What we are doing is taking the quests from Marrow here, and then heading to the Crimson Fen. That's the place with all the big red mushrooms. I'm sure there's a joke there somewhere. Simply enough, just do that quest chain until it's complete and sends you back to your outpost to turn in in the end. By the end of that, you should be level 43, or at least really close, and that all should only have taken you between 12 and 15 minutes. Now say goodbye to Draenor and go ahead and use that hearth to go straight back to Thunder Totem in High Mountain. Aren't you glad you kept that? It's time to get down to business with this zone at last. The river main quests are pretty linear, so continue those until you are given the quest to go talk with Ebonhorn and the other two tribes. Do Ebonhorn's little visual scenario thing first, and now I'm going to give you my route since this zone is similar to Val Shirah at this point in that you've got some options for your direction. Here's my route on the map, though of course I'll walk you through it. I'm gonna rocket through this, so hang on tight. First, buy the bottle of air spark. Then go pick up the tears from the river, then fly up and do the quests at the bridge. 
do all that, and then go get the Dark Shard Crystal. Now fly directly north and do the Harpy bonus objective in the Screeching Crag, as well as the quest there. The Harpy for the quest also counts for the bonus objective when you kill her. Oh, and you can just click on the totems while you're mounted, by the way. A common thing I'm sure you've noticed by now in the Broken Isles, so I just do that since I'm lazy. With all those done, now fly over to the Skyhorn Tribe. Turn in and pick up that next quest, but keep going past it and then down behind it. There's actually some kobold quests you need to do. Do that whole chain. As a note, I wish we could keep Jackie as a friend. I really like her. Now with all that done, get out of that rat hole and then fly over to the quest that you had picked up from the Skyhorn and continue all that. Do the bonus objective with, as you guessed it, more harpies and free all the eagles. Before continuing to Lasan, though, dip left into the cave right before him and wait for a tarn to phase in at the entrance. Do all of his quests, and then you can continue with Lasan. When you reach the end of Lasan's quests and kill the Harpy Queen, don't ride his eagle. Go past him and fly down to the Blood Totem Tribe. Do all of those quests as well as yet another Harpy bonus objective, and follow that linear chain all the way through with Navarog and such. Make sure you do the bonus objective that pops up near where you need to kill Torok Blood Totem as well. I'm pointing all these out so you don't miss them. Torok also counts toward that bonus objective so you can kill him at like 80 or 90 and the guys around him to finish it. Now it's time for the Stone Dark quests. Fly over and do all of those. If you happen to see Dude Brawl in there, give him a fist bump. Don't leave a bro hanging. After all of those, go back outside and fly north and down into the northernmost flight point in the marshes. There's still more quests here. Do everything here, including the bonus objective with, shockingly, not harpies. As a tip, when you get to the quest that turns you into Murky, you can actually exit him and just kill the clackers yourself. It's way faster in my opinion. As a note, if you happen to be here during an invasion, a legion invasion, the murlocs get changed into fell murlocs, and the boxes disappear, preventing you from completing the bonus objective. You can still do all the quests, though, you'll just have to skip the bonus objective part. When all of those are done, now it's time to hearth back to Thunder Totem. Once there, now fly down and talk to Lasan, and then Navarag, and then go inside. Turn in Ebonhorn's quest and wait. Don't do anything yet. Wait until both tribe quests complete. Lasan is really slow, so give him a minute to strut his stuff. When those complete themselves, now go in and do the whole scenario. After that, turn in all your quests and pick up the new one nearby that wants you to collect drums. There's two drums down inside here, so get those and then go outside. Instead of finishing it though, fly northwest to Nissingwary. Do all the quests he has, and when you get to the one to talk to Addie to bring her along with you, don't forget to talk to her before you continue. Good grief, I can't count the times I just picked everything up, did all the quests, and forgot about her. Her quest requires you to kill everything even beyond what you need for the other quests to complete her training, so by the light, please don't forget, or you'll have to basically do everything over again. When you turn that first wave of quests in, you'll get three more quests. Two of them are marked as party quests, and you can actually skip those. The elites for that are quite beefy and take a good few minutes to kill even if you can solo them, so don't bother unless you really want to. The one to kill Irewing, though, is easy. Do that one and then pick up the next quest from Nessingware. Now head back to Thunder Totem and continue the Drums quest. Also pick up the quest that wants you to return three moose. The only two quests I don't do here are the Bola's one and the one for the old lady Tarrant. Those two drive me nuts. Finish the Drums one and the moose rescue and then turn in the moose rescue. Then continue on to Ebonhorn. We'll turn in the Drums later. Now do that entire quest chain, including the bonus objective down inside Neltharion's lair, and then hearth back to Thunder Totem at the very end. Turn in that quest and the drums, and then move on to Snowblind Mesa. Partway through the Snowblind Mesa quest, you'll come across worms, the big worms. When you get those killed, or almost killed, hop over to the ridge and do that quest you got from Nessingwary. Then after you do those three, finish the other quests in that area and continue. There isn't much of the zone left, and the rest is linear, so it doesn't need explaining. You may not even need to complete the zone before you hit 50. And now, at long last, you're level 50. Congrats! Woo! You did it! That wasn't too bad, now was it? Far better than it used to be. 
even though it doesn't look like it, months and months of work went into making this guide. And if you'd like to see the results for all the zones in the game that helped shape this guide, check out my 1 to 50 research playlist. I've also done a 1 to 50 guide for the other faction, so check that out too. Now that you're level 50, it's time to get to level 60. That's a whole other adventure for another video though, so stay tuned for that guide. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte. This is the part where I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. Doing at least one of those gets my videos recommended more. The higher these numbers are, the more YouTube likes me, and that helps me bring you more coffee-fueled content. I thank you so much for any support you choose to give.